The Phoenix Autor is a full-size, minimal design keyboard complete with gold-plated Cherry MX Brown switches. Click the link in the video description to learn more. So for today's video, we're gonna be doing a durable battery bank death match. So we've got the Unifun U821 and Amazon Basics, which is just gonna be our control group because that's not actually a durable battery bank, a Chiro Tough, a pa Foss Power Power Active, and a jar of tank. What I'm gonna do is drop them from a certain height, then dunk them underwater at a certain height, and then increase the height and or depth, depending on what test we're doing, back to back to back to back, until we have one survivor, or possibly more than one, because I don't know how deep and how high I can get, but I'm expecting it'll come down to one survivor. So, let's begin. So the first depth test is just gonna be on this first step. We're not going that deep. The Amazon Basics is probably gonna die. The rest of them are probably gonna live. Let's try it out. I am making all this, making sure all the seals are fairly tight before I put them in. The jar of seal is a little bit more finicky than some of the other ones. This one like floats. So when you're looking at IP ratings, that's done for a half an hour at X depth, depending on the IP rating that you have. I'm not gonna leave these underwater for half an hour because honestly, if you drop it in the water, you should get it within that time. And if you can't get it within half an hour, it's probably gonna be under the water for a lot longer than half an hour. And we're not gonna make this like a six day battery bank death match. So I'm gonna leave it under the water for like five minutes at a time and then it's probably fine. Also, because I'm trying to put them on the same surface, I'm not just dropping them into the water. That might happen later, but for this first step thing, I put them in one by one. So if I have it be a little bit longer, like five something minutes and not just a dunk, then it's a higher chance that everything is more equal. Okay, so I'm gonna take them out of the water now. Gather them up. Now, I don't wanna get water like in the USB thing while I'm charging it. So the Amazon Basics is gonna be a little rough, but the other one should be okay. Uh, we've moved on to Dennis's iPhone. Sorry, Dennis. We'll probably be fine. Let's start off with the Chiro. So there's a little bit of moisture under the water seal for the Chiro, but I don't see any moisture like in the USB ports or anything like that. So we'll see. Yeah, so that one works. We go on to the Unifun. A little bit of moisture, but not much. And this could be from when I open it, moisture kind of goes in. Yeah, that one works. Jar of tank. This one doesn't have any moisture inside. That one works fine. Moving on to the Foss Power. That one works fine. Amazon Basics. Let's see. Does it live on? No. RIP Amazon Basics. No. It's no. dead. So it made it through the drop test, but the second it hit water, this guy was out. We did see bubbles come from it right when we dunked it, so we're pretty sure that was done. And then there were four. Let's drop them from higher up. Okay, so the next drop test is actually gonna be rather simple. I'm just gonna hold them up and then drop them. This is about seven and a half feet, so here we go. The, water test. The, the jar ran away a little bit. I'm not that surprised because there's this really kind of intense rubber on the sides that probably makes it bounce a whole bunch. So the jar almost ran into the water. It almost had an advanced test. Okay, starting with the Foss Power. Works fine. Now the Unifun, it's, it's little cover thing actually came off when it dropped. I secured all of the covers before we dropped them. So that's just something to note. The Unifun is dead. So it wasn't just the cover coming off. The Unifun actually isn't working anymore. If you look at it, I'm gonna press the power button. I'm repeatedly pressing the power button. The lights are not shining. I tried in this USB port and press the power button. The phone doesn't react at all. So yes, the Unifun is out of the race. That's actually earlier than I expected. So RIP Unifun. So if you look at the Unifun, there's a, there's a chip on like quite a few of the corners. As you can see, it impacted very, very hard with the ground. All of the remaining battery banks have at least some form of rubbery material on the outside. The Chiro, the Foss Power, and the Jarve all have a rubbery like it, material that's gonna take impacts. The Unifun does not. It just had that hard shell. So yeah, I think that might be what killed it. All right, Jarve is the next one. This one almost ran away on us and has the most rubbery material around it, so I'm assuming it's far. 
and it is completely fine, immediately started working. And last, but hopefully not least, is the Chiro. Well, I guess quite technically not least at this point, but anyways, showing the Chiro. Chiro works fine. We're down to three. All of them have proper rubbery shock absorption and all of them are water resistant. So just observing some damage here on the FOSS power, you can see like a little bit of a bite in right there, but it doesn't really matter as that has nothing to do with the actual durability or the water resistance of the unit as it's all kind of contained within here, which still seems, still has some moisture from the last uh, submersion test, but seems completely fine in terms of integrity. So that guy seems to be doing okay. The Chiro did land on the button bit. I've kind of cleaned it off and it seems fine, but there's no visual damage. And other than that, it actually seems to be completely okay. I would be hard pressed to say that, that this had been dropped at all if you just handed it to me randomly. The Jarve on the other hand, once we popped it open, we did notice that there was some dents on that raised part on the inside. And I'm kind of wondering, you can see where it landed on the, the rubbery part on the outside. I am wondering if that is going to compromise its integrity. So we're going into the water test. Jarve, can you hold on? One important note about the jar of tank is that its seal can actually be a little bit tricky. So when you're putting it in, you need to make sure that you've pressed down everywhere because it doesn't like to sit naturally on its own, including where the hinge is. So you got to make sure you go all the way along the back. And then you might be able to notice it's still a little bit puffy. And that's because the seals on the inside haven't even gone in yet. So you need to push this area down as well and make sure that everything goes in. That's because when I take it off, you can see these plugs for the USB ports. Those don't even naturally go in. So you have to make sure that they go in as well and seal everything else off or else you're going to lose like all of your water resistance. So our first water dunk test was at about three, four inches. Now we're going to about like three and three quarters to four feet. None of this is exact. We're not measuring any of it. We're basing it off of like my height. So don't worry too much about it. Here we go. I'm sure that was sexy. Anyways, we now have our batteries. I need to try them out. The Chiro has some moisture, just like last time, but again, just like last time, not in the USB port. That's probably because it has the extension under the top. I'm gonna plug it in. No response immediately. Yep, no lights at all. Chiro dead. That's unfortunate. Okay, moving on to the FOSS power. Popping its top. A little bit of moisture, just like last time, but not near the USB port. I think that four and a half feet for five minutes was the great bringer of death. Lost power is dead as well. Moving on to the jar of tank. It is the most expensive, but it also might be the last one left. Oh, there's water under the seal, even though I was very sure that I did it properly. Although that might have been because of the damage that happened when it was dropped from seven and a half feet. If this one's dead too, that would be kind of what, oh! The jar of tank survives. Instantly worked, still shows full power. We're gonna have a special remaining test for the jar of tank, but as far as I'm concerned, it wins. We're just gonna see how much it can take at this point. All right, it is our last remaining battery bank. I'm now going to throw it at that rock wall, let it hit the wall, fall into the water, and then see if it survives after that. Okay, so it's a little bit unfortunate that a few of the other ones didn't survive, because while the jar of tank is still alive, it's also really hard to see because it's all black. So if you did happen to drop it somewhere, like underwater, and it was even the slightest bit murky, it would be really hard to find. Okay, so I found it. It didn't come that far off the wall, probably because it glanced downwards afterwards. It's probably about six feet underwater. We're gonna leave it for five minutes. If it does survive this, we'll do some other tests after that, see if it survives those as well, but survives this I'll be pretty impressed because after the impact it is very likely that that water seal came off so we'll see how it does okay so it's been about five minutes I'm gonna go grab it now see if it survived but kind of don't think so but if it did that would be legendary the water seal is completely off <laughs> so uh, that's probably rip jar oh my god the lights are still on. What? It might still work. 
So it survived that craziness. Now I'm gonna try smashing it into the ground a few times, see if it survives that. If it still lives, we'll try some more crazy water stuff, but here we go. Lights are still on. Although they're like flashing. The second you plug the phone in, the light stops flashing and it charges just fine. The jar of tank is still alive. So at this point, the seal for the water is like completely non-functioning and the battery is slightly bent, but it's still working. I think we're getting into like a little bit dangerous category here. I think it's dead. I think it's finally dead. So just surveying the damage here, this corner where I threw it down on is pretty beat up. Like it's actually lifted. If you look on the inside, I can like almost peel back this corner of like the sticker that's on it or whatever. I don't think it's alive anymore. I'm pretty sure it's definitely conked at this point, but I dropped it from five feet. I dropped it from seven and a half feet. It was underwater at about three inches. It was underwater at about four feet. It was underwater against a wall really hard with its water seal coming off. And then at six feet for about five minutes. And then I smashed it into the ground. It kept working even though it was bent. And then I smashed it into the ground two more times to the point where it's like cracking and it finally died. I think that's pretty solid in my opinion. So it's a few days later and in a completely different location, but I did want to cover a few things. And I'm going to cover them starting in order of which battery bank died. So starting with the Amazon Basics, it didn't claim anything in its title in terms of durability, and it's cheap, and it's an Amazon Basics product, so it's probably just going to work. That was, its, that was its selling point, not its durability, so I'm not surprised that it died almost immediately when it touched water, but I was pretty impressed that it survived the first drop. The next one to die was the Unifun U821. This one totes in its title that it is waterproof, which is not true. It has an IP rating of IP66, which doesn't even mean that it's immersion rated. It means that it is rated for at least three minutes of 100 liters per minute with a pressure of 100 kPa and a distance of three meters of like a water jet being shot at it. Not immersive, just like a water gun. And it died from a drop that none of the other battery banks died from, which was a little bit disappointing because it wasn't really that bad. But, oh my goodness, is it cheap when it's on sale. And it's basically always on sale. So there you go. Next up was a tie between the Foss Power Power Active and the Chiro Tough. Starting with the Foss Power, it claims that it is waterproof, shock proof, and dust proof in the title for the product. One of those is true, not two of them, and that is that it is dust proof, which is not very hard to do. Its water resistance rating is IP67, which is three feet or one meter for half an hour. It died outside of this rating, being at slightly over four feet underwater, so I guess it did pretty well in that regard, but it did lie about its capabilities in the title. The Chiro advertised itself properly by saying in the title that it is water resistant, shock resistant, and dust proof, which is true. It is also IP66 rated, which is the same as the Unifun, but did survive underwater for a little while and didn't die until we had it slightly over four feet underwater. So props to Chiro. Then there's the Jarv tank, which also lied in its title. No, it is not waterproof, and no, it is not shock proof. It does have an IP rating of 67 with the cap closed and 65 with the cap open, which is similar to the shooting water at it thing, but just not quite as aggressive. It took shocks like a boss with me smashing against the wall and then repeatedly smashing against the ground. And it managed salt water even with very, very good levels well beyond its actual rating with the cap off over six feet underwater and managing completely fine. Very impressive, just disappointed that it lied in its title. I'm going to personally stick with the Chiro Tough, and yes, they were a sponsor of ours way in the past, I know some people are going to point that out, but they were not a sponsor of this video at all. We bought the Chiro Tough that we used in this video, and the reason why I'm choosing them is not because they were a sponsor, but because they were the only ones that didn't lie in the Amazon product title for their item, and I actually respect that a lot. Are you trying to code for easy online payments? If you're building a mobile app and searching for some form of simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, which is one relatively small snippet of code, you can be all set up to go in less than 10 minutes. They even have support staff ready to walk you through the process over the phone if you need them. Their code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients, and they have SDKs in seven different programming languages. They make it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types, including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more, all in a single integration. 
To learn more and to get your first $50,000 in transactions fee free, go to braintreepayments.com slash Linus. Who are you going to go with? Let me know in the comments down below or on Twitter at Luke underscore LAFR. You can check out the forum, LinusTechTips.com, become a contributor if you want. You can like the video, dislike the video, be subscribed. If you want to be a subscriber, you cannot be subscribed if you don't want to be a subscriber. That's also fair, I guess. You can buy a T-Shot in the link in the video description down below. You can use our Amazon affiliate code to buy stuff. You can check out Channel Super Fun because it's cool. And I'll see you guys next time.